the ass over breaking with my girlfriend after they slept with my ex while we were on a break. I used to date this person and let's call them Alex. And when I found out they were cheating on me, I broke it off. Their friend, let's call them Emma, was there to comfort me and was the one to tell me that I was getting cheated on. After a few weeks of talking, we decided to start dating. What I didn't know at the time was Emma and Alex liked each other. Right until we started dating. About one month into our relationship, my ex, Alex, found out and forced Emma to break up with me. When they broke up with me, they said that we could be together, but we couldn't date. But that only lasted a week until we decided just to get together, despite Alex. Alex is very affectionate with my partner to the point that it made me very uncomfortable. Two months into Emma and I dating, they broke down and confessed to sleeping with my ex, Alex, a few days after we decided to take a break. I was so hurt and very betrayed. I told Emma I don't think I can be in a relationship with them because after I broke up with Alex, they told me that they, what they thought they did was awful. I got an angry message from their best friend calling me an asshole. I'm an asshole for not wanting my mother-in-law in my kid's life after they tried to kidnap them. My mother-in-law has always been kind of off to say the least. She's always babied her kids and hated her kids' partners. I thought maybe when I was finally married into the family that she would see me as one of her own and actually just be kind and like me, but I was wrong. She was at our house every day making dinner and doing household chores, which I thought was a little odd. When I asked her to stop coming over, she told me that I'm just an ungrateful bitch and that I'm not a stay-at-home wife and someone else had to take over and take care of her son. When we had our child, my mother-in-law would come over and constantly be taking care of my child and would not let anyone else near her except for my husband. One day, I came home from work and my child was gone. My husband was on a work call and didn't even realize that she was gone. When we finally found her, she was with my mother-in-law and she would not give her back. After all that, I put my foot down and told her that she's not allowed in my house or near us again. Everyone in the family is calling us, saying how out of line we are. My husband's on my side. So, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for not being okay that my husband is bi? My husband recently came out to me and I was very much okay with it, as I know that he still loves me and wants me. Since he came out, he likes to talk about how attractive men are to the point of talking about specifics that he likes. This makes me very insecure and I told him multiple times that it makes me uncomfortable. He told me that it's really not a big deal. But if I even comment on how a celebrity man is hot, he gets super mad and won't even talk to me. He recently has been going to a gay bar that we live by. And when I ask the gum, he says no. I feel like he could be cheating. He has a friend on his phone who he texts every day and whenever I look over his shoulder, he instantly shuts off his phone and snaps at me for looking. I love my husband, but I feel like he may not want me anymore. I was okay with him being bi, but now I don't know. We got in a fight about it, and I said what he's been doing is not okay. And I told him how I felt. He said I'm being homophobic and a bitch. I have no idea what to do, but I kind of feel like my relationship is over. So, am I the asshole for not being okay with it? And what should I do? Am I the asshole for telling my wife to stop acting like she's too good for a local dinner? Today was my youngest daughter's birthday, so we asked her where she wanted to go for dinner. She said that she wanted to go to Denny's, so that's where we went. Our daughters ordered burgers and waffles. I ordered a steak and my wife took a salad. She kept complaining about the food, saying it wasn't good. I tasted some of her salad and it tasted fine to me. I asked her what the problem was and she said that the dinner wasn't good enough and that it isn't as good as the restaurants we usually go to. She likes to go to high-end restaurants. I took her aside and told her to stop acting like she's too good for a local dinner and to suck it up for our youngest daughter's happiness at least. She got mad and said that I'm being rude to her and this restaurant was really cheap and just not good enough. I gave her the car keys and told her to drive herself home. Am I the asshole for telling my wife to stop acting like she's too good for a local dinner? She didn't like her food and I told her to suck it up for our youngest daughter's happiness at least. She got mad and said that I'm being rude to her and this restaurant was really cheap and not good enough. So I gave her the car keys and told her to drive herself home and get dinner for herself from a high-end restaurant of her choice. I told her I'd get a cab for myself and the kids. She stormed out of the restaurant. When the kids asked where mommy went, I told them that Nana called so she had to go but she'd make it up to them with ice cream. We had dinner, went to a movie, and took a cab home. When we got home, I put them to bed because my wife hadn't returned yet. I called her and she said that she'd be at her mom's place for the night. I think maybe I was too harsh on her. My daughters rarely get to go places like this because my wife hates them. Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter go to her homecoming dance? My daughter is 14 and a freshman in high school. Me and her mom have split custody. She came home from being at her mom's for a week and wrote homecoming on her calendar and starts talking about all the plans she made with her best friend to go to the homecoming together. Homecoming week happened to fall on a week that she's with me. She starts raving to my wife and I about the dress her mom took her to buy and that she's matching with her friend. She even bought a ticket already. I was furious with her entitlement to just make all these plans without asking me first. 
I can admit it's not just her fault, but her mother's as well for not clearing it with me before buying her the dress and ticket. In fact, I wouldn't put it past her and the mother to have bought the dress and ticket before asking in order to force me into letting her go. I want to teach her a lesson about asking first and not assuming I'm just going to let her do what she wants. Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter go to her homecoming dance? I want to teach her that she can't manipulate people in order to get her way. I told her that if she asked first, I would have been happy to let her go to the homecoming dance. But since she decided to make plans and buy stuff before even asking, I wasn't going to let her go. She cried and told me that you only get one freshman homecoming and I told her maybe she should have thought about that. I said all of them are the same anyways and she has three more opportunities to go and she's not missing much. She sulked in her room for the rest of the day and didn't talk much. I tried to comfort her but my wife said not to because I'd be teaching her that I'll give her my attention if she acts up and cries. I went to comfort her anyways but she rejected me. This infuriated me more so I left her in the room to cry alone. Her mom was furious when she found out and demanded I pay her back the money she spent. I said absolutely not because she didn't clear it with me. Am I the asshole for forcing my daughter to find her own way to a wedding because of what she was wearing? My wife and I have three daughters. Our youngest, Jill, just started community college this year while our two oldest have moved away to start their careers. Jill lives with my wife and I as she is attending college locally and this saves her money. This past weekend, we were invited to my niece's wedding a couple hours away. The dress code was semi-formal, so men were expected to wear suits and women in dresses. As we were getting ready to leave, Jill was taking her sweet time getting ready, and I was kind of nagging at her. She'd been out late the night before with her friends, and I'm sure she was feeling the effects of that. She was finally ready to go. She was wearing some kind of black spaghetti strap halter top thing with leggings. I told her that wasn't appropriate for her cousin's wedding, and she needed a change. Am I the asshole for forcing my daughter to find her own way to a wedding because of what she was wearing? She told me she doesn't have anything else to wear and I don't get to police what she's wearing. I told her that judging by the amount of dirty clothes on the floor and in her closet, she clearly has other options. I told her it was disrespectful to the bride to wear something revealing and tacky. She called me a jerk and said no one was going to care what she was wearing. And if they focus on her, not the bride, that's their problem, not hers. I told her in that case, how she's getting to the wedding is her problem, not mine. I'm not going to arrive with my daughter looking like she's about to hit the club at 2am. My wife told us to calm down. She told me I was being overbearing, but told Jill that she'd help her find a better option. Jill scoffed and went to her room and closed the door. I told her she has 15 minutes to be ready or we're leaving without her. She called me an asshole. After 20 minutes, I told my wife I'm leaving. I'm an asshole for kicking out my pregnant girlfriend. My girlfriend and I have been dating for one year and she got pregnant a few months back when we started dating. She is about seven months along right now. I'm super excited to be a dad, but my girlfriend is not the person I thought she was when we first started dating, which I'm guessing just could be the pregnancy hormones. I've been working a lot so we have some extra money and she hasn't worked at all. She got mad at me for neglecting her while I was at work and I told her I'll see you when I get home and we can get some dinner together. Well, I guess that wasn't good enough because when I came home early to surprise her, I found her making out with her ex in my home. I didn't even know that they still talked and I was super mad and just started yelling, asking her how she could do this and why. Her ex left and she was just laughing at me, saying I'm being a baby right now and I need to calm down. She said that she really needed attention really badly and since I wouldn't give it to her, then she would find it somewhere else. I could not believe what I was hearing. I told her to leave and I threw out all her things and did not let her back in. She was crying and saying that I'm overreacting and that I'm evil. She said she had no place to go and I told her just to go with her ex. I feel bad, but she's crazy. Her mother texted me saying I'm going to ask and I'm going to rot in hell. I feel like I did the right thing, but I don't know. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for kicking my roommate out of our apartment? I am so fed up with my roommate. She never paid rent on time and she has almost gotten us evicted for it on two different occasions too. She will never clean the main room, even after she had tons of people over for a party. And she's never bought food or done anything or even cook. And she would constantly eat my stuff. She was gone for the weekend to go see family. So I took it upon myself to tell the lanyard that she was moving out and I'd be the sole tenant. Since this place is kind of sketchy, the lanyard didn't care as long as he still got rent from me. As soon as she was kicked off the contract, I threw all her stuff out into a dumpster. And I put what I thought was most important into a box by the door. I asked the lanyard to change the locks, and he did, so now she did not even have a key. The place is so much cleaner and so much quieter without her, as well. When she came home from that weekend with her parents, she couldn't get in, and she started banging on the door and screaming. Meanwhile, this is at like 11 o'clock at night, and she was threatening to sue me, but this is my apartment now, and she has no rights to it. She even called the police. So was I the asshole? I'm the asshole for not wanting custody of my kids. My wife and I are getting divorced, and we have two kids together. They are a handful. We had kids super young, and I feel like I never got to live out my fun 20s since we had them when I was 20 years old. My wife and I are getting a divorce because we both realized that this is not what we want anymore. I love my kids, but I do not want to be a dad right now. And my ex is such a good mom. I feel like I would do more damage than good if I had to take care of them right now in this state. I want to have some fun before I go back to being a dad. 
I told my ex what I was feeling and she told me that I needed to grow up and that I should have thought about that before we had kids. I obviously did not know that at the time and it's too late now. My ex has already found a new guy and he treats our kids so much better than I could right now. I told her that I need some time to find myself and she told me if I do this then she'll make sure that I never see them again. And she also threw in some not so nice words about me and what I'm considering doing. So I'm just wondering, am I the asshole for not wanting custody of my kids? And you guys can always spend stories in me on my Instagram DM. Thank you. I have a best friend named Tina who I've known most of my life. We've had a strong friendship from middle school all the way until we graduated from the same college. We've always been there for each other and I tell her pretty much everything. Back in junior year of high school, a guy named Rod sexually assaulted me at a house party. He never apologized for it and it put me in a deep downward spiral to the point where I almost wanted to drop out in order to never see his face again. I told Tina about it and she did everything she could to support me. Fast forward to early 2020. Tina and her boyfriend Josh announced that they were getting engaged and Tina wanted me to be the maid of honor. I was beyond excited to do it. We've always talked about being each other's maids of honor. There was another detail though. Josh had a similar friendship history with his best man and thought it would be adorable if the maid of honor and best man worked together on everything and were their own second package on the wedding day. I guess it was their way of making us feel a little more excited for weddings of our own. I found out that the best man was going to be Rod and he and Josh remained best friends after high school. I thought Rod was just in the friend group but it turns out that they're as close as could be. My heart sunk and I simply didn't know how to respond. They expected us to work together and be together the whole wedding process and that sounded like literal hell. I started to think about whether Tina ever told Josh or that Josh heard and just didn't care. All I know is that I was having second thoughts about the wedding after that. I texted Tina about my concerns with Rod coming in the most polite way possible and she sent me this. I know about what happened with you guys back in the day but Rod seems like a great guy now. It would just really mean a lot if you could just push that memory away for the duration of this. Please just trust me. I don't know how to respond to this and luckily the wedding planning process process has been at a haul since COVID. I haven't responded to her since that text, but now this has really been bugging me. If I say no, it would probably break her heart, but I just don't know if I can handle working with my rapist. Am I wrong for not wanting to work with him during her wedding? Part 2, my best friend wants me to work with my rapist on her wedding. I finally replied to Tina with, I've had time to think about it and I just can't be your maid of honor anymore. It's so hurtful that you're telling me to pack up my trauma for who knows how long until your wedding day. I just can't do it. I don't think I'll come at all knowing that he's going to be there. I'm sorry. An hour later, I get a call from Josh. He asked me what's going on with me and Tina and that she was extremely upset. A part of me snapped and I said, I don't know, what's going on with you making someone who raped me your best man? He was confused and I repeated myself. He was silent for a few seconds and then asked if he could come over. I was a little wary of the idea, but I said sure. He comes to my apartment 40 minutes later without Tina. Tina had told Josh that the reason I wasn't coming to the wedding was that I didn't want to work with Rod. Because I had a crush on him and that she was forcing the relationship too much. So basically, she said that we had a petty girl fight. My jaw hit the floor and I was fuming. She had obviously never told Josh what Rod did to me. I shared that Rod had raped me back in high school and that Tina knew about it. I asked if he knew too. He said he didn't, but at one point Rod did mention a few crazy bitches falsely accuse him of rape senior year. This obviously didn't include me since I only told Tina and a few family members. Josh believed him at the time, but I guess after hearing me say it, it's starting to dawn on him that his friend was a liar. I could see on Josh's face and body language that the realization really weighed down on him and I felt bad. He thanked me for telling him and left. I was expecting an angry text to come from Tina and sure enough, I got it at like midnight. She went off saying that I'm going to end up destroying their marriage, how I could do that to her, etc, etc. I just pressed the block button and went to bed. I'm going to try to connect with other friends and try to move on from this. If I'm feeling brave enough, I might try to find these crazy bitches and see if we can make a case against Rod. I'm an asshole for not wanting to be BFFs with my friend anymore because of how she treats me because I'm bi. I've been friends with my best friend for about 8 years and let's just call her Cece. Me and Cece have always been super close. Our friendship has always been really toxic. We'd always fight over stupid things. But after a year or two, we became really good friends and got along great. But now that we're in our teens, things have started to change. I'm bi and I'm very proud of it and when I came out as bi, she had no problem with it. Or so I thought. Later on, she tells how she agrees with me being bi, but everyone else says that she feels grossed out about it. I haven't been in very long relationships, but her every relationship that she gets into, then a week into it, she stops talking to me. And if she does, she'd tell me that she would choose them over me. I just do not know what to do. In one case, one of her boyfriends found out that I was bi, and we were sort of chill before it happened, but now his whole demeanor changed. He makes rude comments about me in front of all our friends, and she stuck up for him. And then when she started losing feelings for him, then she would stick up for me. I just do not know what to do, and she has not been talking to me. Every time I try to talk to her, she makes me feel stupid for wanting to talk to her. She also made me cut off contact with all my friends a couple years back, and now I'm getting back in contact with them. She found out and she got really mad at me. I don't know what to do. I'm an asshole for rehoming my dog. I got my dog three months ago and I loved him. He was amazing. I was also nine months pregnant and I was super excited to have a baby and a new dog. After my baby was born, my dog would constantly growl at my kid and try to bite him. 
This was so out of the blue for me as the dog has been a sweetheart before now. I was super scared it would hurt my kid. So I just tried to keep them separated as I thought maybe it was just because the kid was new. I gave my dog lots of attention as well because I also thought maybe he was jealous. This did not work as he still tried to go out of his way to get to my kid. One day I went to go out to go get the mail. And when I came back, my dog was looking like he was about to attack my kid who was in the crib. I got there just in time as my dog leaped forward. This was my final straw. I put the dog in my car and drove him to a no-kill shelter and just gave him up. I let them know that he was not good with kids as well. I felt so bad. I was also on a Facebook group for people with dogs and I vented a little to get some reassurance that I did the right thing. So many people call me cruel for doing it. I obviously really miss my dog, but my son's safety is more important. I've been feeling really down about it, so I'm just wondering, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for not making a vegan option for my stepmother? So my husband and I were planning on having family over for Thanksgiving and we really wanted to have a nice big turkey because we both grew up really poor and we never had a really good Thanksgiving dinner. We of course made sides like stuffing and mashed potatoes as like no Thanksgiving dinner is really complete without or at least we thought so. When the night of the dinner came around, my husband's parents came in. They were very impressed by the spread of the food we made throughout the day. We were also expecting my father to show up with his new and let's just say problematic wife. She always makes stuff about her and recently became a vegan. My husband and I, however, did not know that she was vegan and my father did not tell us. She and my father finally made it about 20 minutes late and the food was even starting to get cold. So we rushed them to the seats and so everyone could enjoy the meal. When we're sitting, I instantly realized that my stepmother wasn't even putting anything on her plate and looked extremely angry. I asked her what the issue was and she said it very aggressively. She said very aggressively, I don't eat anything from animals anymore and this is extremely insulting. This started a whole fight and they stormed off. I'm an asshole for telling my boyfriend's sister to stop calling my baby her baby. My boyfriend and I just had our daughter a month ago, and he hasn't talked to his sister in 13 years due to his mom wanting to protect him from her. Until recently when their mother passed away. When I was six months pregnant, his mother passed unexpectedly, and he was having a really hard time getting through it. So when I was seven months pregnant, his sister reached out to him, and he wanted to give her another chance. Because it's only him, his brother, and his dad now. I haven't had a problem with his family except for her. It bothers me when I was in the hospital less than 24 hours after having my daughter and she came to see her and started saying it's her baby and our baby to my boyfriend. She saves every photo that I put on Facebook. She even made her own baby album of my daughter and wants to get her name tattooed on her, which I asked her politely not to do. She told my boyfriend off after I said not to and said I'll hold off until she realizes it's just an ant thing. He hasn't even given me a chance. My boyfriend doesn't see anything wrong with it. I'm highly frustrated and I'm severely uncomfortable around her. So am I the asshole? I'm at asshole for coming out to my parents. My parents are super religious and do not support the LGBTQ plus community. I have been gay since I can even remember and I've always wanted to tell them. I have joked about it with them before and they laugh and say, thank God you're not though. And that's obviously not reassuring at all. One day I got up the courage and just told them. I was so nervous and was about to cry. My mom and dad lost it and said there's no way that they could have a gay child. They said it's not in their genes and that I will be in hell. I told them that's not true and that it's just who I am and that I really hope that they'd be okay with it. They said that they're not and my mom was crying. My dad was so mad that I made my mom upset that he told me to leave right now. So I did and I stayed at a friend's house for a couple of days. When they called me three days later, they said I can only come back if I promise to be straight and that I cannot act on any of my homosexual desires. I said yes because I obviously just needed a place to stay, but my life is so much worse. My mom and dad hate me and are making me go to church every single day to talk with my priest. I regret even telling them, so am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for not being friends with them because of their political beliefs? I was friends with this girl and let's call her Sarah for 12 years. We've been through so much together. She was like my best friend. Recently, she's been getting more and more right. She believes that this pandemic is just a government scheme and that it's all fake. She constantly brings up politics anytime she can and tries to persuade me to her side. I constantly tell her I do not believe that and I am sticking with the facts. Of course she gets mad at that and she likes to go to Facebook for all of her facts. I cannot stand her and her beliefs as they are literally all that we talk about now. We got into it recently and we were debating and she constantly would tear down my looks or something whenever I would just show her a statistic or kind of prove that I'm right. I swear she does not even know what she's saying. She says that I'm just a dumb liberal who doesn't even know what the real world is like. And that I need to face reality. I had enough of her acts and I told her I cannot talk to her anymore until she changes or just shuts up. She has been posting on Facebook about how one of her friends is fake and a bitch. And we all know that she's talking about me. I do miss her and I feel bad about how things ended. So I'm at the asshole. I'm at the asshole for cheating on my really crappy boyfriend. My boyfriend and I have been together for a very long time and he's always been a jerk to me. Telling me if I ever leave him, I'll never find someone better. 
and then I'll never find someone else. Then I'm ugly and no one will love me except for him and constantly he's telling me that I'm such a shitty girlfriend. I hate this relationship, but I'm scared to leave because I'm scared of him. And I think what he's telling me is true. I met this guy at college and he was super nice to me. It was nothing flirty or romantic at first, but it did start to get that way. One day, the guy told me that I was pretty and that he likes me. I told him I like him too, but I'm in a relationship. I told him how my relationship was and I explained everything to him. And he was super understanding. We did flirt and we did kiss. I felt bad because I knew this was cheating, but my boyfriend was an a-hole and super mean to me. So I felt like it was payback. My boyfriend went through my phone like he does monthly and found out. He flipped out and screamed at me and threw things at the wall. He told me that I'm worthless and I need to end things with that guy now. I went to tell the guy and the guy said he can help me get out of that relationship. I obviously feel bad for cheating, but I'm going to continue to see this guy. So am I the asshole? time about how i hooked up with my best friend's fiance and all of the groomsmen disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram i repeat this is not my story time my best friend and i met two years ago her and i both worked at tripper clubs and we made a lot of money together one day she met this guy at the club and he took her out on a date and then they got engaged about two months later yep it was really fast me, on the other hand, I dated a bunch of guys and never really found anyone because they would all ghost me. When my best friend decided to get engaged, I told her I would help her plan the wedding. At first, it was really, really fun, but soon my best friend turned into a bridezilla. She was the worst. She was always angry, super emotional, and didn't like any of the things that I helped her choose. Oh my god, and when it came to the cake, she was totally indecisive. That's when she started getting to a lot of fights with her fiancé because he wasn't pulling his weight. Which, trust me, I totally understood because he was more interested in playing football with his friends and hanging out with his friends than actually helping her out with the wedding. This, to me, of course, was a really big red flag. I actually started getting more and more suspicious of him, so I decided to do some digging. On his Instagram, I saw that he followed a bunch of local girls. So I decided to make a second Instagram and basically pretend I was him. I reached out to these girls and told them that I was him and that I just made a second account and that I wanted them to know that this was my account. And believe it or not, some of these girls fell for it and had full-on conversations with me thinking I was him. In order to find out information, I would ask them questions. And sure enough, some of these girls were telling him that they had so much fun the last time they saw him. One even asked to see him again. This really stressed me out a lot because I didn't know how to break the news to my best friend. At that time, I just didn't know how to cope with stress, so I basically went and got drunk. I was super upset at my best friend's fiance, so I decided to call him and confront him about it. So I called him and told him that we needed to meet up. And he said yes. Mind you, I'm still drunk. He shows up to my apartment, comes in, and brings beers with him. I was like, oh my god, he's actually gonna try to hook up with me. I knew it right away. Part of me was like, what the heck? But the other part of me was like, I mean, he is cute. Ever since he started dating my best friend, I could tell that he was a little flirty with me, but it never occurred to me that he actually wanted to, like, actually hook up with me. But I knew that he was only doing this because he thought I was super, super drunk. So I started drinking some more beers, and it happened. I woke up feeling super sick to my stomach. I knew what I had done, and I didn't know how I was going to tell my best friend now. Thankfully, he had already left my apartment when I woke up. That same night, one of the groomsmen was hosting a party at his house. My best friend and I got ready together in her house, and then we went over to the party. And the whole time, she kept asking me what was wrong. She could tell that something was off. I couldn't even look her in the eyes. We went to the party, and I basically hooked up with all of the groomsmen in one night. That's when my best friend's fiance came up to me and asked me what I was doing, because he saw me making out with three of the other guys. He grabbed my arm and told me that I needed to relax, and that if I wanted to be with him, that I couldn't be hooking up with his friends. Friends. I was so shook. He actually thought I was in a continual relationship with him. And the whole time, I'm only doing this because I'm trying to get him out of my system. A few days passed by and I still don't know how to tell my best friend. So I cooked dinner and invited my best friend over. I was going to break the news to her. 
As soon as she came into my apartment, I just said it. I told her I hooked up with her fiance and all of the groomsmen, and that I caught him cheating on her. Part two is up. Story time about how I hooked up with my best friend's fiance and all of the groomsmen. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. I repeat, this is not my story time. That's when I decided to confess to my best friend that I had done all of these horrible things to her. I invited her over for dinner, and as soon as she came in, I just vomited out everything. When I told her all of the truth, she said nothing. She stayed quiet for a few minutes. By the way, I was crying. I was like sobbing. She then started to laugh. I asked her why she was laughing and she told me that the truth was that she didn't want to get married to him anymore and that she already knew that he was being unfaithful to her and that she knew that we hooked up. And when I asked her how she found out, she said that she actually followed him that night to my apartment and that she saw he stayed in here for hours. She said she called my phone and I didn't answer, so obviously she connected the dots. And she told me that she didn't care if I hooked up with the groomsmen. She also said that she knew that he was hooking up with a bunch of girls around town and that she had been following him for around two weeks, seeing who he was hooking up with. I explained to her that I was really drunk and that I just didn't realize what I was doing. Then she actually forgave me. She said that she had been planning on breaking up with him, but she didn't know how to do it and that I actually helped her decide whether or not she should break up with him. But she was really angry. She was mostly angry at her fiance. So here's what we did. We got his car impounded. We even called his parents and told him what he had been doing. She even called the landlord and told him that he had been doing horrible things in the apartment and that he needed to be kicked out ASAP. She ghosted him and blocked him from everything. Luckily, my best friend lives in a gated community, so he actually couldn't come into her apartment. He even reached out to me, but of course, I blocked him and did the same thing. So now he was literally homeless, without a car, and since his parents were mad at him, they didn't take him in. So he had to go to stay with one of the groomsmen that I had already hooked up with. The next logical step was to sell the engagement ring. We went to a pawn shop and she got $15,000 for it. With the $15,000, we actually started our own little business and even went on vacation to Cancun for two weeks. He's still trying to reach out to her and me. He sent me messages on Instagram apologizing. And of course, he's asking me to convince my best friend to get back with him. We actually met this big director while we were traveling and told him about the story and he actually wants to turn it into a movie. Who knows if it'll happen yet, but I'm hoping it will. And when it comes out, you guys will know who it is. Now we live in a really big fancy house. We actually run our business from home and we travel whenever we want. Now the question is, would you have forgiven me or not? Bye. My cousin Millie is 30 years old and is an ER nurse. Her birthday was a few days ago and we planned a birthday prank which was leaving a fake snake on her cake. All fun and games because we do this every year to every family member. Well apparently this year Millie didn't want it so she was pretty pissed at the fact that we didn't. Now a few days ago while I was in school I got a call from Millie during lunch. I thought it would be her saying she's picking me up but it wasn't. She proceeded to tell me that my mother had passed away in a car accident. My heart dropped and I felt like puking. My mother and I don't have the best relationship but I still love her. Millie began to tell me the details of the death and what exactly happened to the point I hung up on her and called my mother. My mom, who was supposedly at work as a nurse, didn't pick up and I ended up running to the bathroom. I called my dad bawling my eyes out and telling him what happened. He didn't understand what I was talking about because he called my mom right before I called. He made me explain everything and understandably he was pissed. He picked me up from school and called my mom in the car just to prove that she was alive and okay. That night my aunt, who's not Millie's mom, called a meeting to her house and we all talked it out. They were all pretty much disgusted with Millie as she tried to justify her choices, but she ended up apologizing. I got up and I stated that I didn't ever want to talk to her again. Now Millie is engaged. Her wedding is coming up soon and I was supposed to be a flower girl. I'm 15 but they wanted me to be a part of it. So now I have pulled out of the wedding which is what Millie is worried about. She doesn't want people to question where I was and started to yell at me for being petty. My dad took me home and blocked Millie on everything. Her fiancé, who I'm very close to, ended up messaging me, asking me to come, and I told him no, and what his fiancé did was disgusting. He said, while what Millie did was wrong for doing it at school, it was just a prank, and I blew up at him. She told me my mother was dead. Fucking dead. He sounded generally confused and asked me what the hell I was talking about. I told him what happened, and turns out Millie and her mother lied to him and said that Millie just sent a gory picture to me while I was at school. Next thing I knew, he left to go stay with his mother and apologized to me. Now I'm getting blamed for ruining Millie's relationship. I'm not talking to her or her mother, but am I the asshole? For clarification, Millie knew that she was going to get pranked. She has participated in pranks in the past and has never said she hated it. We also asked her close friends and her fiancé if the fake snake was okay, which they gave us a yes and that it was fine. 
Am I the asshole for cutting my hair so my sister had a longer punishment? This technically happened around seven years ago, but after newly revealed information, things are tense. Back when I was 17, my younger sister Ellie thought it would be a fun prank to cut my hair in my sleep. I'm a bit of a mover and active dreamer, so when I suddenly jolted, my sister panicked and ended up cutting off a much longer chunk than what she wanted. Out of instinct, my sister let out a scream, so I woke up and saw what she did. My parents woke up to me yelling at her and in turn yelled at her too. My mom took me to the hairdresser and I ended up going from having my hair halfway down my back to a pixie cut. As punishment, my sister had to use some of her savings to pay for my new hairstyle and then gave my sister a choice to either get a buzz cut or no phone and no social life until my hair got longer. Let me be clear when I say until my hair got longer. I don't mean that until it's back to its original length, but rather long enough so that growth was noticeable. My hair usually doesn't take too long to grow, so my sister chose the second punishment as she didn't want to lose her hair. That just made me all the more furious, so out of vengeance, I would give myself little trims at night in the bathroom every once in a while to make it seem like my hair wasn't growing. Eventually, my sister got tired of waiting and missed hanging out with her friends outside of school and asked for some other type of punishment. Our dad reminded her of her option, but it still had been months and my sister felt like it wasn't fair because she didn't intend to cut as much as she did and that she apologized and insisted that while my hair could grow back, she could never get back time that she missed enjoying her teen years. My sister would cry and pout, but refused to shave her head to get back her privileges. Over time, I got over wanting revenge and just let my hair grow and my sister was ecstatic to getting off the punishment. Years went by and we never spoke about it again until we had a conversation with our cousins talking about the worst thing we've done to our siblings. My sister brought up the haircut and I casually mentioned how I got back at her. I didn't think it was a big deal anymore, but my sister got upset and later texted me calling me an ass. So, am I the asshole? Story time about my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. By the way, we're calling her Alexis. So me and Alexis have been friends since we were babies. Our moms were best friends and they sent us to the same school, had the same friends and everything. But the thing with Alexis is that she was super jealous and insecure. Whenever I did anything without her, she get very controlling. We got to high school, we started to drift apart, and I made new friends. But, like after school, she'd always tell me that she didn't like my friends and that I'd be better off finding prettier friends. I would tell her, yeah, they might not be the most prettiest, but I like them. One day when I go to school, all of my friends are ignoring me and are giving me dirty looks. When I go to lunch, one of the most annoying boys walks up to me and tells me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. If you want to know what happened after that, let me know down below. This is part two of how my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So, like I said before, this kid comes up to me telling me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. And in my head, I'm like, so that's why nobody's talking to me? So I went to my best friend at the time, which started the whole mess, and I didn't know. I asked her if she heard anything about this going around, about them wanting to jump me after school. She laughs at me and says, I should have kept my mouth shut. I get completely irritated because it's like, now I don't have her support. After school comes, and everybody quickly runs outside. Me, I'm stalling. I'm very slow at my locker. When I come outside, all of my friends are lined up, and everyone gathered to see who's about to go down. I'm running out of time. Y'all let me know down below in the comments if y'all want a part three. This is part three from my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So like I said, I walk outside and everyone is gathered around. I walk up to one of them saying all oh, the rumors that they heard aren't true. One of my friends said, you know what you said and pulled into my hair. And at that moment, I tried to swing back, but I just get jumped on. And they literally jumped me. After the whole thing was over, my best friend Alexis helped me. We went to her house and she cleaned me up and said that those girls were fake and that I should have listened to her earlier about not being friends with them. And I was confused on why she was helping me because she laughed in my face when I asked about it. But I left it alone because at least she was helping me and maybe she was right. Fast forward two weeks later, one of my friends who jumped me reached out to me apologizing. I asked her why and who even told you I was talking badly about you. Guys, believe it or not, after I get done speaking with her, I found out that my best friend Alexis lied and told them I was talking badly about them and the girl even sent fake screenshots of messages between me and her. During Halloween, someone asked me if I ever had a paranormal experience and I told them no because I was in disbelief of ghosts and I was actually going through paranormal things at my house for years. I denied it to keep calm but now that I moved, I feel comfortable enough to speak on the creepy things that went down. So back in 1995, my dad had passed away and my mom felt very uncomfortable being in our house so we moved closer to family. I believe at the time I had to be 7, 8 and my brother was a teenager. The new house we moved in was very cold, not just physically 
but in a sense, emotionally cold. Well, that's how it felt to me. The floors cracked every time you walked, and the doors would make squeak noises. The first week, my brother would play around my door and scare me, but one night, in the middle of the night, I get a knock on my door. I ignored it, thinking it was my brother, and then I heard another knock, and it woke me up. I got up to tell my brother to leave me alone, but when I opened up the door, there was nobody there. Come back for part two. Part two of my paranormal experience. So if you don't believe in unknown spirits, you can skip this. So like I said earlier, when I opened my door, nobody was there. I ran to my brother's room. He was asleep, so it was no way it was him. Next morning, I told my mom about it, and she assured me that ghosts weren't real. Anyways, a month later, weird things started happening to me. I started waking up in weird areas. The corner of my floor, the bathroom, and even my brother's room. He started to get weirded out and thought I was doing it on purpose, but I told him I didn't know how I got there. So that night, I begged him to stay in his room because I was scared. The next morning, I woke up to my brother staring at me. He said, I think you sleepwalk, but you weren't really walking. You more so was dragging yourself. I saw you trying to leave the room. I called you and asked where you were going, but you weren't responding. And then you started floating in the air. I know this all sounds really crazy, but I'll explain it in part three. Part three of my paranormal experience. So my brother told me that I was sleepwalking and then I started floating in the air. My stomach dropped and I felt so scared. Then in the middle of me fearing my own body, my brother bust out laughing. I asked him, what's funny? He was like, I was messing with you. And I moved towards him and pushed him for scaring me like that. He was like, I had to, you were so scared. And then I laid back in the bed so relieved. But then he said, you didn't float, but you definitely were sleepwalking. It explains why you wake up in my room. I was slightly confused because I've never walked in my sleep. Heck, I didn't even know sleepwalking was a real thing. I thought it was just something that they did in the movies. That day when my mom got back from work, I told her and she agreed to take me to the doctors one of these days. After a couple weeks, I completely stopped popping up in weird places, meaning I stopped sleepwalking. At least that's what I thought. I thought this whole paranormal thing was in my head until I had a near-death experience. But something saved me, and I'll explain it in part four. Part four of my paranormal experience. A couple months later, when I started school, I started having dreams about my dad. It'd be him preparing me for school, home, making me lunch, helping me pick out clothes. But then I'd wake up from the dream, and I realized that he wasn't actually there. It really saddened me, and it kept happening. I'd have that same dream over and over, and it went on for weeks. Then suddenly, I had a dream that the house we used to live in caught on fire, but in this dream, I could see myself, which felt weird. My dad had got up and started waking everyone up and telling them to go outside and leave. But when he got to me, I wasn't waking up. He kept shaking me to wake up. I'd think he'd pick me up to take me outside, but he was seriously just shaking me to wake up. He started crying, and I've never seen my dad cry, just telling me to please wake up. Then he screamed at me and said, wake up. And the scream was so loud that it actually woke me out of my dream. When I opened my eyes, I must have been sleepwalking because I was.